Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Ho Ling, and I am a staff member at Unison. And we're really glad today to start off with um, a student's perspectives um, to kick off uh, what we're going to talk about for the whole day. So uh, we have Club here. He is a proud recent graduate of City University. Um, and we'll do a little bit of Q&A sharing with him. So uh, maybe, Club, uh, do you mind giving us a little bit of background of you know, who you are and your history in Hong Kong and all that? Good morning, everyone. My name is Club. Uh, I'm from Nepal and have been living in Hong Kong for, say, about um, 15 to 16 years. Uh, I used to study in um, primary school. I started studying in primary school and then secondary school, um, so-called designated school. Yeah, mostly non-Chinese uh, non are uh, studying in those schools, and then moved to. Somehow I end up in university. Perhaps we can dig deeper in there. Um, so, yeah, and yeah, um, congratulations on your um, uh, graduation. Oh. So, um, I, Club, would you uh, tell us a little bit? I think we're on the topic today on um, learning Chinese. Mm. Um, when did you start learning Chinese, and um, what was the environment in which you started learning Chinese? Um, we you know. I think like it was like when I first arrived to Hong Kong. Um, I arrived to Hong Kong when I was ten years old, and then um, I missed actually. I missed one year of uh, school because uh, I came to Hong Kong in the middle of the school term, so I didn't get any ad admission. So I had no friends, and then I had to stay in ho home because all my parents used to go to work uh, from nine to I mean from early morning to e e late evening. So I have nothing but the TV. So uh, it was very interesting. So I usually watch a lot of um, local TV, like ATV and all that. You know, I can name a lot of dramas. And somehow, the, I think like my, my teacher, first teacher was a TV. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, when did you start formally learning the language? Uh, formally, after a year, like I admitted to uh, primary school. Uh, primary five, and then it was so difficult. The Chinese level was really, really difficult, and that, that was uh, my formal education uh, in terms of like learning Chi uh, Chinese. Yeah. And um, so, can you describe a little bit? Um, you told me you also got to learn from your peers, even though right. you were in a school uh, in a class with mm. all other ethnic minorities. How was that like? Uh, it was a bit uh, overwhelming because, like, uh, learning. I mean, like. Chinese language was very, very uh, new to me when I studied in um, uh, primary school. Uh, my friend used to be like, I mean, in primary school, I don't know, like my friend was all like very used to speaking in um, Cantonese. Like uh, we didn't even go, like call out his teacher. We would say, Lausi, Lausi. And then I was like, what is Lausi? And then uh, that, that how, that, that's somehow I started to learn. Uh, Chinese in primary school because all my friends were like addressing each other in Chinese, even calling teachers in Chinese. Um, so I should say like around fifty to sixteen percent, uh, fifty to sixty percent of uh, communication was in Chinese. In fact, yeah. So it's interesting because your classmates were also um, non Chinese. Yeah, yeah non Chinese. Um, so uh, what? How would you describe your Chinese level when you were in primary school? Um, after first year, I could communicate up pretty well. Uh, I, I mean, I could express myself, um, broken Cantonese. Um, and then um, I just studied uh, two years, I think one and a half actually, in uh, primary school, and then quickly uh, moved to secondary school mm. as one. So I, I know that you went to a secondary school where they use English as the medium of yeah. instruction. Well, first. Did you find English difficult? Oh yeah, definitely. You can hear my English is also not so good because, like nowadays, uh, my English um, I cannot really speak English in my day-to-day -day life because uh, all my colleagues are Chinese. And then, uh, so yeah, the thing is that uh, in primary school, most of the time I was really exposed in Cantonese. I mean, in Chinese environment, everything was in Chinese. And then when I uh, started studying in uh, secondary school. Certainly, I need to switch to English medium, so everything was in English. So when I first you like my first time calling my teacher or teacher like uh, um, like Miss Wong, that was a bit uh, weird to me because uh, I didn't get used to it. So um, then I s stopped completely practicing Cantonese at all. Mm. Yeah. So so um, from primary to secondary school, which when you, uh, let's talk about the 
the curriculum and the, the lessons that you were having. Right. Comparing secondary school Chinese classes and primary school Chinese classes, uh, which one was easier, which one was harder? Uh, I expected, or you know, I expected, like I was, I don't know, like it was, like Cantonese was genuinely very interesting because yeah, you can express a lot of things with a lot of people. Um, so I wanted to learn more uh, Chinese, but then like when I moved to secondary school, everything was very easy because it was like a P1 level uh, Cantonese, like all the materials like P1. Uh, I think it was good for my uh, friends. Like they were, their Chinese was not so good. But then, like uh, when I used to study in primary, it was very difficult. Like literally, like um, what local student would study in uh, uh, primary five or six. So then, that that actually made my motivation go off the roof. So I was like, ah, this is too easy. But then I stopped completely. Stopped using Cantonese. Then, okay, then my Cantonese was. Stuck there. So uh, you mentioned your motivation on learning Chinese. So yeah. um, uh, in secondary school, did you did you really like to learn the language? How, how was that like? Um, I wouldn't say like I don't know like um, all of my friends were not really interested. I, I think they were interested in learning, but then like we were more uh, like not so. Keen on uh, learning, I think I should say, because like we were all very focused on doing some other stuff like playing and having fun, uh, not really engaged in uh, education in broader sense. Like if I compare local Chinese students who studied in Banwan school and compare my school I used to go, the environment was like totally here and there. So it was like off comparable, but in a sense of learning. Um, Yes, we were interested, but it was not really interesting. <laughs> so the you mean the Chinese lessons weren't interesting? Can you describe you know some of the things that you were learning? Why weren't they interesting to you? I mean, the thing is that we could not really relate it. I mean, relate uh, ourselves what we are learning, uh, and the thing like we could uh, use it in the day to day life. In primary school, we can use. Uh, we were very interested to learn Chinese because, like, all of our friend was speaking Cantonese. Even non-Chinese friend was speaking Cantonese, and some of the foul language were very interested in learning that. I mean, like, it was very practical, and you know, the, the thing we can use it in a day-to-day -day life. But then, when we moved to, uh, like, when we started a secondary school, it was too basic. I mean, like, lay ho, so san. I mean, like, those things, like, uh, we already learned it, but then, like, it was very repetitive. And another thing was that uh, also the teachers played a huge role on that also. What do you mean the teachers played a huge role? Um, I mean, I think it's also like uh, teachers also affects a lot, especially the teacher's attitude on teaching um, teaching students. I'm, I'm not like putting down teachers, I mean, saying anything bad to the teachers, but they were putting a lot of hard work, uh, yet still, I mean, there was a bit uh, difference between like what we want to, how we want to learn, and how teachers were teaching these students. Do you know in your secondary school whether you, the things you're learning are from you know store-bought textbooks or whether they were, um, you know, something developed by your teacher? Um, I didn't knew that time like you know, the materials was actually personally developed by teachers. I think that um, some teachers was really really hardworking and very concerned about. Uh, though, um, like our friends' futures, so they were uh, putting their self and then developing those materials personally. Of course, that has a benefit of its own, but the thing is that it's also limited to one person. I mean, so that becomes a problem itself. For example, the, um, one chapter was really easy, next chapter was like way difficult, so we could not really relate chapter one and chapter two, and that also hindered us like progressing our Cantonese level from step by step. Yeah. So um, you meant, you described yourself as not a very motivated student in learning the language yeah. for, for a while in your youth. Um, how about now, did something change? Uh, I think the reality hits hard. <laughs> when I graduated, uh, when I finished my high school, I, um, you, we, with my friends, like uh, I only get like um, in HQC, I only get three points. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not ashamed of it. But then I only get three points. And when I shared this one, uh, like in ours, like the circle, 
a three point was pretty good. But then when I <laughs> when I get out from our circle and then we share it with my friends, like you only get because my Chinese friend nowadays say that oh I only get eighteen point in SQC and they're like oh, there was I'm like what really? And so I think that like. Uh, what I used to think good and like what other people th used to think good was like way out different. Uh, the thing was like it was mostly because of the exposure what we were exposing to. So we would we did not has had like a lot of uh, just like positive or like a successful uh, exposure to our like the circle. So that's why. And uh, you told me a really interesting story almost like a turning point to realizing, oh, maybe I need to catch up on my Chinese. Can you oh, share yeah. that with everyone? Um, the thing is that after I studied, um, I finished high school, so I need to start finding jobs. So, um, so my first job was like bartender, and then uh, so I got my paid. Uh, it was pretty difficult. <laughs> and then I quit, my, I quit that job where like, like <laughs> Yeah, and then like I started looking for these uh, schools. Um, with that pair, like I wanted to treat my parents a very good uh, dinner. And then we, we, my parents usually don't like traveling here, or like very far away for the like, um, we just for one dinner. Like usually Chinese culture is like, oh, let's go to uh, Tonga Wan, it's Causeway Bay. And there's a lot of uh, good restaurant. Even they are uh, staying in, uh, say, Yulong. But then my parents then say, oh, let's just find a restaurant in Yulong. So I've found one restaurant, but the thing was that everything was in Chinese, even the menu I was in Chinese, so that I used to, I wanted to treat a very good dinner to my parents, but I could not read a thing in the menu, and then it was like a bit, the thing that I was like, oh, I should have studied Cantonese, and then I think that was a big turning point for me, and so, so yeah, that hit me pretty hard. So, and then later, you, I know you have a, a long, convoluted, but um, successful road towards university. In the end, mm. you were enrolled in a bachelor program. So after you have that realization, or maybe I really need um, the language skill in Hong Kong, mm. was there any opportunities for you to catch up on the language? Uh, that was the thing. Like, I think like a lot of different NGOs are focusing on uh, teaching non-Chinese, I mean, ethnic minorities, uh, Cantonese. But it's very like short period or like maybe one or two years. Uh, I mean, it's not the fall of NGO because they are getting fundings for one or two years also. But the thing is that they are not looking at like, uh, how about one or two years later? Because language is like a, uh, in my, uh, um, my background is accounting. So it's like a compounding interest. Like, uh, So language will actually help us to uh, get a return on something in, we invest. For example, if I speak in Cantonese with one person, uh, or if I speak in uh, English, uh, hi. The, the tone is very different, and with the way we connect with that person, in, uh, uh, the, uh, assuming that person is a local, is very different. And the return we get, or uh, the response we get from that person is also very. If I say lehoa, they say oh lehoa, let's say kong chung mang That's uh, if I say like uh, hi, you say uh, hi. You see the the response and the return we get is way different, and. That makes a big impact in finding a job, you, you making a friend, or finding a girlfriend, a boyfriend. <laughs> really, it makes a difference. So I'm just saying that. So language, and then I'm, when I try to find a language, uh, like Twitter or NGOs, like we usually say, oh, we only do for one or two months, or it's very basic stuff like that. So, so we could not go to the one stop where we can say, oh, your level is this, and you should start from here. And then after uh, studying for one or two years, you'll, your level will able to go from here to here. So there was no concrete vision or like a um, structure in any NGOs w which could have done that. Yeah. So it was very difficult to find. Stuff. So uh, I think time has elapsed from you realizing that language is important to now. You had quite a bit of practice in university at right. work. Um, how is that like? And how how is um, how is your communications with your peers like, and how how do you view your I think future career prospects too? Um, um, oh yeah, so after I start uh, somehow get into university, um, all my friend was in uh, Chinese, so now I have to force myself to speak Cantonese again, and then it was pretty interesting. Um, but then I started to have another problem is that I could not really deeply connect with my peers. I mean, uh, they, they, they are very nice, but then when I try to express myself in Cantonese, um, 
I could not like uh, I have so many things I could I want to express to I mean have fun with them uh, with it, uh, I mean a lot of different types of jokes I want to share with them um, even like when we hang out there is a, sometimes a dead air I need to fill up with the English so that actually hinders a lot now I'm, I'm suddenly in, end up in one of the big four companies so so I, when I communicate with my colleague that also have a big problem. So I think like learning Cantonese is a must, especially in prof like when we start working, because like uh, in a company they will not expect you to. I mean, your boss will not expect you to speak uh, English for just for you. I mean, so of course like a uh, different uh, corporate have different policies, but then like uh, as an individual staff itself, we have a responsibility to e equip ourselves to become a um, competent employee. For that, we need to learn Cantonese. I, and that is also one of the motivations where I want to improve, why I want to improve my Cantonese level, and why the other students, like uh, coming generation brothers and sisters, should improve the Cantonese, because we need to equi equip ourselves to become better at something so we can express, we can create, we can add value to Hong Kong society and make it a better world. Yeah. And uh, you already work in a multinational, a big co corporation. A lot of people would say, well, it's a very English environment. What do you find it? Um, yes, it is uh, multinational. But then the, uh, the thing is that where you are working, I mean, uh, of course, the company is um, big. Uh, that, but then you're working in Hong Kong, so you should not expect everyone to speak English just for you. Um, they can speak English, of course, but I, I think like I would suggest you to speak Cantonese. I, I always do that because the response you get is very different, and the connection you ha will have if you speak English and if you speak. Uh, Cantonese is also very different, and the bond you build when you speak Cantonese is also different. So that. That's why I think we should speak a uh, mixture of something. But it depends on the user. Like if, if your colleague will use it, prefer you to speak English, I think that's good also. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Club, for your sharing today. No problem. Thank you.